This lesson we will divide expressions involving radical expressions. Keep in mind if the numerator and denominator are both under the radical sign and they have a common factor, canceling may be the best strategy. We do have to keep in mind, however, that there should be no radical in the denominator of your final answer, so frequently we will need to rationalize. Let's look at some examples. We want to divide and simplify. In this case, Notice since they're both under the square root sign and 2 divides evenly into 128, this is the same as the square root of 64. And we recognize that 64 is a perfect square since 8 times 8, so our answer will be 8 here. In a similar way, the square root of 75 divided by the square root of 3. We could use the same tact as before. However, notice there is another process just to show you an alternate method we could rationalize this by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the square root of 3. So that would give us the square root of the 9 in the denominator, which is the same as 3. We multiply 3 times 75, we wind up with... Well, before we do that, why don't we break 75 into 25 times 3. So we have the square root of 25 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 3. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3, so 5 times 3 is 15. But then if we simplify 15 divided by 3, we wind up with 5. Um, method A is probably better to work with when it works out nicely. If it doesn't work out nicely, sometimes you're forced to use method B. Suppose we have variables. Same thing. Notice they're both under the square root, so we're allowed. 3 goes into 147. 49 times. So we have the square root of 49x squared. The square root of 49, remember, is 7. The square root of x squared is x. So our answer is 7x. Actually, what we should have to be more precise would be 7 times the absolute value of x, because we don't know whether x is a positive or negative number. So this is actually a better answer here. Continuing, we have the square root of 144y to the fourth divided by the square root of 16y squared. If we divide 16 into 144, since they're both under the square root sign, we can divide, we get 9. y to the fourth divided by y squared. Remember, you subtract exponents when the bases are the same. So we get 9y squared. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of y squared is y. So 3y is our answer, although 3 times the absolute value of y is actually better. What happens if we have a binomial in the numerator? Well, what we want to do is let's begin by simplifying the square root of 75. We can rewrite that as the square root of 25, which is a perfect square, times the square root of 3. What is the square root of 25? That would be 5. So that means we could rewrite this as 15 plus 5 times the square root of 3, all divided by 5. Now, I need to emphasize you cannot cancel the 5s here because of the add sign. If we have an addition or subtraction, we have to do it for each of those. So one method would be to factor. Notice that the numerator has a common factor of 5, so we can fake, take the 5 out. 5 times what equals 15? That would be 3. 5 times what equals 5 the square root of 3 would be plus the square root of 3 over 5. In this case, these cancel, so our answer is 3 plus the square root of 3. An alternative method to doing this problem is once we get to here, is we divide, put it into two parts, take 15 and divide it by 5, plus 5 to the square root of 3 divided by 5. Now this works better if there's no common factor. 15 divided by 5 is 3, 5 divided by 5 is 1, so we get plus the square root of 3. In this case it comes out exactly the same. Let's try one more, 6 minus the square root of 20 divided by 2. The square root of 20 we can divide into the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Notice my first choice is a perfect square. What is the square root of 4? 2. So now the numerator looks as 6 minus 2 times the square root of 5 divided by 2. It looks like we can factor 2 out of each of the terms in the numerator. 2 times what equals 6? 3. 2 times what equals negative 2 to the square root of 5? That would be negative the square root of 5. Notice you should check this by using the distributive property to make sure you get back to here so we don't make a careless mistake. In this case, we have common factors of 2, so our final answer will be 3 minus the square root of 5.